has spoken at an event like this, and I was the seventh politician to speak. It was 105 degrees in Lancaster County, South Carolina, and I was last. And I got up and I said, Mr. Mulvaney, you want to say anything? And I got up and I said, thanks very much, and I sat down. And a little old lady walked up to me literally afterwards, and she said, son, that was the best political speech I've ever heard. <laughs> Listen, I'm here to say one thing and one thing only, which is thank you. Y'all, two years ago, helped me, came 10 miles down the road to Rock Hill, South Carolina, helped me be the first Republican in the 5th Congressional District in South Carolina since 1880, all right? I know there are people here who did that, and we did this together. We made these phone calls together to help get rid of John Spratt, who at the time was the budget chairman. And I know there's folks here today returning that favor. That's why I'm here. I'll do everything I can for Richard Hudson. I'll do everything I can for Robert Pittenger. I'll do everything I can for Patrick McHenry. I'm going to do everything I can for Mr. Romney, Mr. Ryan, because we absolutely have to win this election. So I'm here to say thank you. Keep up the good work. This makes all the difference in the world. Folks are in there making phone calls. This is where elections are won and lost. Go home tonight. Call one of your friends who's always complained the last four years about where the country is going and say, why weren't you down there with us today? And when they say, well, you know, I just didn't have time to do it, I say, look, if this is not the election that you're going to get involved with, what are you waiting for? It doesn't get any more important than this. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for everything you're going to do for the next three or four weeks. And now please welcome my good friend, Patrick McHenry. Look at this, I'm not that short, Mick. It's just a really large microphone. It's a lot of time for everybody else. But look, I just came from Asheville last night where you had folks, and let's say that Asheville's really not known for its conservative bent, but they had 7,600 people, a capacity crowd, come out for Mitt Romney. a great crowd of folks that were ready and energized. What did you think of that debate last night? Yeah. Well, did you see Kamikaze Joe, or was it Red Bull Joe, <laughs> came out last night? You know, he was all about just interrupting and yelling and everything else, right? Imagine if a Republican had done that. Imagine the press, right? But they are so desperate that they're willing to send Joe Biden on the stage and let him say whatever he wants. Imagine that. That's, that's a level of desperation for that take that we haven't seen. So it says that you're having an impact. It wasn't just Mitt Romney's debate or Paul Ryan's debate. It was the enthusiasm we have on the ground because we want to take our country back, don't we? Yeah. So far in North Carolina, we've made 2.5 million voter contacts. That's door knocks. That's phone calls. And I want to thank you for that. If you want to know why North Carolina is falling decidedly in the Mitt Romney and Pat McCrory camp, why? Because the enthusiasm we have on the ground and the hard work that we're doing. Thank you so much for all that you're doing to make sure we win this election and put together a real plan for economic growth that Mitt Romney's going to lead. Thank you. It's, it's my honor, it's my honor to introduce to you a great business leader, a fantastic community leader, the next congressman from the 8th District who's going to make sure that Larry Kissel is unemployed so we can get America Richard Hudson. I really appreciate the warm welcome you've given me and my wife Renee is back here. Hi, darling. Uh, appreciate the warm welcome. I, a, a few months ago, I was in another county in the 8th District that's not quite as Republican, and I was going through a room talking to people, and I noticed this fellow leaned up against the wall, had his arms crossed, he had a little scowl on his face, and being the optimist I am, I said, I'm going to go talk to that guy. I can win his book. So I went over to him and stuck out my hand and said, sir, I'm Richard Hudson, and I'm running for Congress, and I appreciate your vote. And he just looked at me. He said, I wouldn't vote for you if you were St. Peter. <laughs> kind of surprised, but I looked right back at him and said, Sir, if I was St. Peter, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be in my district. But I appreciate the strong support you've given me. I've, I've never run for office before. Uh, I've always been a behind-the-scenes person. Uh, but I've just gotten so fed up with the direction they're taking us in Washington. Yes. Yeah. So fed up with a president who spends money we don't have. We actually print money so that we can buy our own debt. Yep. Do you believe that? 
Yeah. That's like getting a credit card in the name of your kid and running it up and saying, when you grow up, you need to pay this off. <laughs> Literally, that's yeah. what it's like. And that's immoral. We got to stop it. And so that's why I decided it's time to run. And the fellow I'm running against, Larry Kissel, he's got these yard signs out in the 8th District that say, another conservative for Kissel. They also are in yards that have Obama yard signs too, so figure that out. <laughs> but he's trying to portray himself as a conservative, and, and you know what, he's taken three or four good conservative votes. In fact, he voted against health care twice. What he doesn't tell you is he voted for it twice. So where does he really stand? He's a guy that campaigns on eliminating the death tax, but he voted to make it permanent. This is a guy who voted for stimulus that's now, the price tax over a trillion dollars. He doesn't share our values. He doesn't represent us. And it's time we send him home. Because the basic problem is that Barack Obama and Larry Kissel, they don't understand the American dream. They don't understand the essence of why we're a great country. You know, I grew up in a small town in eastern North Carolina. I moved to Charlotte when I was 14. But I can remember being a little boy in that town. My favorite Sundays were the Sundays when my parents would take my sister and me to the Holiday Inn for the all-you-can-eat buffet. You know what I'm talking about? As a little kid, I thought it was the biggest buffet in the world. And so I love those Sundays. So we'd get in the car, we'd leave church, and we'd drive out to the interstate where the Holiday Inn was, and we'd pass this house, big white house, up on a hill, biggest house in our town. I used to love that house. And I can remember riding by the house, and my mom would point out the window. And what she wouldn't say was, look at those greedy rich people up there. That's not what she said. She said, Richard, if you stay in school and you work hard and you get a good job, one day you can have a house like that. And that is the essence of the American dream. Yes, Amen. Right. Yeah. Because what it's about is the freedom of opportunity. It's the fact that anybody in America, no matter where you're born, no matter what your circumstance is, you can be anything you want to be. And you can go out and take a risk and start a business. And by the way, if you own a business, you did build that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But you can take a risk. You know what? You might fail. But you can get up and try again. And that's why America's great. And that's why this president and Larry Kissel, you know, they, they want to have this utopian society where they can where government can make decisions for you, the decisions that you're not smart enough to make for yourself. That's why they tell you what kind of light bulbs you can have. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's why they want to have 15 unelected bureaucrats tell you what kind of health care you can have. But what they, what they don't mention is they can also tell you what kind of health care you're not going to be able to have when the money runs out. And so they want to have this utopian society where the government does everything for you. But that's not what we're about. You know, they want to make us like Europe. But by the way, Europe isn't working in Europe. It's sure not going to work here. And so we got to keep up the work. We've got 24 days and about, uh, what, six and a half hours? I'm not counting, but, um, <laughs> you know, we've got, a, we've got a few days left. And so thank you for those of you who are here making calls. And I just ask all of you, commit at least one day a week in here making calls because we've got to get the word out. When you go home tonight, send an email to everybody in your address book. Give them the list of the conservative judges. Tell them why you're voting for Robert Pittenger for Congress or Richard Hudson. Mitt Romney, Paul Ryan, tell them why it's so important and encourage them to get out and vote. We've got to do everything we can do. We've got to touch everybody that you can touch because the stakes are that high. So I just ask you to, to recommit with us and, and let's make these next 25 days the road to victory and the road to our turnaround. Now, I've, I have the honor of introducing our next speaker, who actually is the speaker. <laughs> John Boehner. Uh, came to Congress representing the 8th District of Ohio, and he joined this group called the Gang of Seven. Y'all might remember these folks. We had a fellow from North Carolina uh, named Charles Taylor who was part of that group. And these guys were rabble-rousers. They came and shook things up, and they said, we're not going to allow the House Bank uh, members to continue to steal money from the House Bank. Remember that? We're not going to allow members to go buy stamps on their government account and then go sell them back and pocket the money. Remember that? John Boehner and these guys uh, took on the establishment. And that's his background as a reformer in Congress. Uh, the other thing I like about John Boehner, he's, he's one of 12 children. Uh, he worked in his family business growing up, mopping floors, waiting tables. My dad was a home builder. I can remember as soon as I could walk, he took me to a job site and said, pick up trash, I'll be back later to pick you up. <laughs> so I can appreciate someone who's had to work. Um, but uh, he also worked his way through college like I did. He was a night janitor at his college. That's where he met his wife. They've been married 37 years. They've got two daughters. Uh, he's a good man. And John Boehner was the leader who organized the Republicans, who stood up against the stimulus, who stood up against cap and trade, who stood up against Obamacare. We didn't win that fight then, but we're going to win it next year, I guarantee you. 
John Boehner has been a leader, and uh, there's no one with more integrity in Congress. Uh, there's no one who cares more deeply about the American people. I'm proud to call him my friend, and I look forward next year to calling him my speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, Speaker John Boehner. Charlotte. Uh, I just want to tell you that uh, I, I've been all across this country over the last few months and uh, right now it's day 20 of a 45 day trip uh, from uh, Maine to California, from uh, North Dakota to South Florida uh, because when I'm in for my team, I am all in for my team. And uh, I've got to tell you, every place I go, there's one issue uh, that continues to come up time and time again and that's the economy. The American people keep asking the question, where are the jobs? And uh, I gotta tell you, we got a guy in the White House who just doesn't get it. And so uh, it's time it's time for a new direction. And it's time for a new team. Uh, and it starts right here in North Carolina with Pat McGrory running for governor. Yeah. Mulvaney, Patrick McHenry, uh, great members of our team that are working hard to try to do the right thing for the American people every day. You know, uh, Governor Romney did a good job in the debate last week and uh, really started to help, uh, help build an awful lot of momentum. And last night I couldn't have been prouder of my friend Paul Ryan. times. <laughs> uh, I continue to press his point. And if you looked at both of those debates, what was the central issue uh, that uh, our team for the White House continued to talk about? It was about the economy, jobs, and their plan to get our economy going again. Listen, I've uh, worked closely with the President and uh, over the last couple of years, uh, trying to find common ground to deal with the big issues that face our country. Unfortunately, the President he really doesn't understand our economy. He's never had a real job, never done anything. And as a result, we've never, we've not been able uh, to move the ball ahead. You know, the president talks about investment. When he talks about investment, he's talking about taking your tax money and giving it to Solyndra and whoever. When I talk about investment, I'm talking about real people investing their own capital uh, in themselves or in their own business. And so it's hard to have a conversation with someone that speaks a different language. Right. Mr. Mitt Romney understands how to create jobs. He also understands uh, what big government can do to destroy jobs in our country. And so you look at uh, Romney's five-point plan to get our economy going again, frankly, it's going to work. But I came here today for one reason, and that's to thank all of you for what you're doing. You know, elections aren't won and lost based on what the polls say. Uh, they're won and lost based on who shows up to vote. And uh, right. not everybody's committed to voting every time there's an election as those of us here. And so uh, a little uh, reminder, uh, a little uh, phone call, a knocking on their doors, all of these things really do work. Now listen, uh, not many of you know much about me, other than what Richard told you, I've come from a big family, my dad owned a bar. You know, I'm the last guy in the world to want to be here. But, <laughs> you know, I was able to work my way through school, get into a small business, bought the small business, grew it into a successful business. And along the way, I got involved in my neighborhood homeowners association, and I became speaker of the house. <laughs> <laughs> still gonna happen to you. <laughs> you know, but I got involved because uh, the opportunities that were available to me, and the opportunities that were available to all of you, are being snuffed out for the next generation uh, because government's getting too big, taking too much in taxes, too many rules and regulations, and if we truly want. Uh, to make sure that our kids and grandkids have the opportunities that we have. Now we've got to get this government in, under control, get our economy moving again, and let America be America. Amen. Amen. So over the next 24 days, just remember, uh, there's a reason we're doing this. There's a reason that uh, we're up here running for office, uh, because we believe in the cause. Uh, but there's a lot of ways to play a role 
uh, in this business, and you're playing a role as well. Now those phone calls, those door knocks really do matter. Because if we're serious about saving the future for our kids and our grandkids, this is the election. God bless you, and God bless you.